Hey pretty bird, how you doing? Seems to be enjoying life. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's June, so it's time for the May garden tour. Yeah, a few days late, but that's all right. Only a few days behind. I almost skipped the garden tour for the month of May. And then I thought about it and I was like, eh, probably not a good idea. There are some people who only watch the garden tours and a lot has changed between April and May or April and June. It's the same difference. Not making sense yet, am I? Still waking up. This is what I get for saying I'm backing off the caffeine. This spot right here, totally different from the month of April. I haven't planted these things up yet. If you watched the last video, I had just sort of mocked up all the pieces over here. And then I wanted to focus more on getting annuals into the ground. When I ended the last video, I stopped off with just saying, I'm going to put myself to a bit of a challenge. Instead of filming everything I do, here's what I need to do. And let's see what I can get done between that video and now, and there's a lot. I did a lot, there's a lot going on down over here that I have to show everybody. So we'll just do a quick recap of what's going on over here. Have a bunch of impatiens that are ready to be planted up. Some Vinca, Supertunia, Vista Indigo, hasn't been planted yet, still just sitting there. Like I said, was more focused on getting things in the ground. I had family in town, which means there were helpers. When there's helpers around, like to put them to work, the stuff that goes in the ground is a bit more tedious. I did some more pruning over here on the Robolini palm. Had a lot of fronds hanging down that were hitting me in the face when I came outside. So I thought I'd just go ahead and cut those off of there. This is really starting to get some nice growth to it. I like the way the trunk is starting to bend. Looks nice with a little solar light that's hanging up over there. On the croton, there is some new growth starting to pop out from inside. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's in there. It had some flowers on it too. Where'd the flowers go? There we go. So it's still happy, has some sun scorch, always does. That's just kind of the name of the game when I move this one outside. Tends to throw a bit of a fit and I just let it. I could take the time to harden it off, but then by the time it's hardened off and then get it moved into the sun, so much time has passed that I'm over it. So I'd rather just let it go through it and it flushes out new growth and always looks just fine within a few weeks. Seems to be liking the spots, responding well to the light over here. I was worried maybe there wouldn't be enough sun with the palm trees up here above it. Thought it might get too shaded. So far, seems pretty good. Haven't gotten this clamshell over here planted up just yet. I did have people asking me where I got this. This, I believe, was from a company called Frontgate. Maybe it was Grandin Road. I don't know. Two of them, both of them were gifts. So I don't know for sure if that's where they came from, but I think that's where those were from. I've had them for years, so who knows if they are still selling them or not. There is a flower over here. I know I'm moving fast. There's it's a lot to talk about. Diamantina, coral orange, orange sunrise, diplodinia has a beautiful flower on it. Isn't that lovely? This is an apricot mandevilla next to it, but it's just the uh, diamantina diplodinia. So pretty. I love the colors on that one. Mr. Goldstrike, Akuba seems to be loving life. Loving the way the colors are working over here with the orange and the pinks and then the foliage and then more pink and then the canary wings back there. This hibiscus. Okay, we need to talk about it. A couple of months ago, I was at a nursery and they had a whole bunch of just gorgeous hibiscus. And there was one that stood out to me and it had this beautiful orange flower on it. As you can see right here, isn't that just a freaking awesome flower? I mean, it's just orange, orangey yellow, but something about it just really spoke to me. I really liked the way that one looks, but it was one of those ones that's braided with four different plants in it and they all had different colored flowers on it. And I didn't like all the other colors. I just wanted the orange. So I unbraided it and now this is, well, that's what's left. It's gonna be fine. I need to straighten that trunk out. The wood is still soft enough that I can do that. I'll get it repotted here soon and get it up onto a stake give it a cut back, make sure the soil's nice and rich, keep it fertilized weekly, and that's going to bush out and flush out and be a much prettier plant. Right now it's kind of scraggly. The flowers, so totally worth it. So down here on the hot tub wall, well, this is new. I'm probably gonna talk about this plant in a different video. It's a very special plant that deserves its own spotlight. Like we can have a quick look at it though. This is a Carolina sweetheart red bud. Beautiful variegated foliage. It looks very, very similar to the variegated sea hibiscus, which is right next to it. So this is the tropical with much, much, much larger foliage. Nice big leaves. This is a small one. The leaves get bigger. Even that's a small one. That needs a cut back in a repot. This needs to be planted up, but not ready yet. We'll talk more about that when it's time, but look at how similar they are. 
This one's a perennial. I think it's a zone four and up, or maybe four through eight. Let me find the tag. Eh, six through nine. Wasn't right about that at all. There's the name, if you wanted it. Carolina Sweetheart. Beautiful plant. I think it's the most excited I've been about a plant in a very, very, very long time. So it's going to get its own spotlight and some more attention. I got the Kiwi Cordelin Fruticasa potted up over here, and then I potted up this banana which is sort of on the struggle bus. This one had mealybugs really bad when I pulled out of the garage, so I just cut all the foliage off and decided to restart it. I cut most of the foliage off, and that's going to flush back out with new growth and look great here in no time. I filled in the pot with some nice blue stones and some white gravel around the palm trees is sort of going through for like a, you know, little island vibe there. It came out looking messy right now because one, the hot tub, not the best background doesn't look super pretty right there and the banana's not looking too hot but it will here fairly soon bananas are quick growers they're very forgiving plants this oh so easy italian ice rose loving life in this spot i was thinking that it wouldn't do well over here but so far seems very happy it smells nice too it has a lovely well it smells like a rose we all know what roses smell like the pepe la palm pomegranate you kind of see getting ready to flower i'm so excited look at that can you see this bud in here Gonna be covered in orange flowers here very, very soon. Pineapple, still pineapple, and have this perennial planter that got put together last summer with some salvia and some silver brocade artemisia. Coming over the front, it seems to be happy. Not much to it, just, you know, a couple simple plants in a simple pot. Simple pot, and it's a seashell pot, but you know what I mean. You just dump them in there and they did their thing, they grew, they're looking good. Eureka palm, doing what I said it was gonna do when I moved that outside. This is a plant that throws a fit when it gets moved into the sun and I don't bother hardening off to the extent that I should. The Eureka, I, I've talked about this, I'm gonna make it quick. The Eureka palms, they take a really long time to harden off, at least in my experience where I live. I'm sure there are various people with various experiences with that. It's gonna depend on where you live, your angles of the sun, altitude, all kinds of things can affect that. But to get them fully hardened off, it usually takes like six to eight weeks and I just, I don't have that kind of time. I generally give it like a week or two where it's going to get pretty good morning sun and afternoon shade. And then I just move it and I end up with some scorch on the foliage, but they always need a really heavy prune right around June anyways. So it doesn't really matter. I'm going to be cutting all that off here in a week or so as it's flushing out the new growth. Just starting to do almost every trunk is starting to push out new foliage. That new foliage comes out just Loving the sun and loving life and generally looking pretty good. This was an area that I did a, a good amount of cleanup with, but haven't finished it yet because I'm redoing the drip from basically right here all the way, pretty much the entire yard. I'm going to redo the drip. But I basically left off where I was in the last video with this spot. There were annuals and things everywhere in here, and there's not that much left. I have some impatiens left, a few petunias, and that's about it. Definitely made a good amount of progress over in that area. Over here, there's a lot of new stuff. I'm trying to think, yes, I did plant up all these impatiens in the last video. Those are starting to get moving, starting to grow. Same with the Tredescantia nanooks that are down below them in the front. It's these right here. They're also, heads up, gonna be a lot of weeds. Lots of weeds. I took some time off from weeding, which is always a big mistake, and I'm paying the price. Nothing some burnout or dead brew won't fix, though. Over here, I added a very large seminal pink hibiscus. It's quite tall, got that repotted. It's in a 15-gallon pot. That thing was in a 12-inch pot, a tiny little pot, so that's going to appreciate that repot, I think. And then in front of that, I put the bulletin. Probably not saying it right, never have, but it looks beautiful there. And then there's a yellow hibiscus in front of it, so there's sort of a terrace here. I think that that's going to end up looking nice. These ginger right here, these right there, they're going to grow up a few more feet and have beautiful orange flowers on them. And I'm going to really like how that orange is going to look with the pink. That should be much taller than that. That's in a big pot. And when you get a hibiscus in a nice potting mix and on drip, they will put on a good amount of growth very quickly. So I would imagine that'll put on at least two to three feet of growth this season. It's going to totally hide the light that's back there, but that's okay. Who cares? Generally up like this entire area anyway, so I don't really think that that matters. It'll just add a nice glow from inside the hibiscus tree. You get it. The pink flowers up top, orange over here. I'm going to make sure that this stays pruned so that it doesn't go any more than, you know, well, to the bottom of that bird feeder just below it. So that'll be there for the hummingbirds and just to look nice. The view from in the house, beautiful. Let's look. You want to see? Let's look. Huh? Huh? What do we think? Loving that. That's going to be so pretty. I mean, it's already pretty, but when there's going to be the orange flowers sticking up from those gingers and then these bells, 
that are on the bulletin. The window is dirty. The dogs keep jumping up on it. These dangly flowers right in here. It's gonna look so nice with the pink and the orange and the pretty and then the other thing and then the palm tree trunk that's out there. I like to consider the views when I'm planting things and the view from right here is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> really came out nice this year. Same thing with this window too. So traditionally I've always had this Alexander palm that's back there planted up right around here in this garden bed. Moved it back so I want to make space to put probably a magnolia. I'm pretty dead set on the magnolia. I need to do some more reading into the invasiveness of their roots since there's a foundation about, about 12 feet to maybe 15 feet over from where it would be planted. Need to look into that for the variety that I want to grow. I was thinking I was, pardon the, the dog's having a drink, pardon that background noise, but I was thinking that I would miss having that Alexander palm closer to the window. But I don't think I do because it had gotten so tall that you really couldn't see the foliage from here all that well. And it's still going to look nice with those banana cannas that are right there and then the gingers. It's going to be a lot of color in here and then the magnolia, hopefully. And oh, the, while we're here. Look at the hydrangeas. Aren't those looking pretty? We can go outside. Let's go back outside. Are you coming outside? All right, first you gotta sit. Then we need to make a deal. If you go out there, you can't get in the pool. I need to stay dry. You think we can manage? Can we do that? All right, wait. Good boy, you're free. I love him so much. Such a good dog. If there was more I wanted to talk about over here, but I started talking. I'll go over there and work our way back. Try and keep it consistent. So here's that area that I was pointing to from out the window. All kinds of gingers in here. They're all coming up. There was one that I was concerned about that one of y'all sent me, Sean. Thank you. I didn't think it had survived the winter, but there it is. Slow to get going, but it's down there. With the Hedicium gingers, that's what these are, the green right there. Those are Hawaiian butterfly gingers. There are a lot of different types of Hediciums, and I have had the best luck with the ones that are in the cup. I'm not gonna try and say it. This group of Hedichiums right there. Any of the varieties that come from those, that's where I've had the best luck keeping them here in zone six. I also forgot to do the things. People get confused when they're new here. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, zone 6A, 6B, right on the line, it does get cold here. All of the tropicals are in pots, or I guess I should say, if you see it in a pot, it doesn't stay out here during the winter time. Sorry, should have said that at the very beginning of the video. But these Hedichium gingers, the ones that I mostly have out here are the Flaming Torch about six to seven feet tall and have a flower spike on them that's generally 12 to 14 inches with a creamy orange flower on them. They're a fantastic ginger, very cold hardy. Every single spot that I planted them, they've come back. This corner back here is very, very warm. So I expect those to come back, but I haven't planted down over there. You saw them, there's some over there that are coming up too, but the ones over there are much smaller because it's a colder spot down there. I also have one that got planted last year, which I believe is the Elizabeth right here. So similar to the Flaming Torch, but a pink flower on that one. And then uh, this one that Sean sent me as a Gardnerianum, I believe. I always get it wrong. I always have to look it up. Whole point there is that typically with the ones that aren't of that Cochitsidana, whatever that was right there. I've tried the Coronoriums and some others before and they have still come back for me, but they usually come back very slowly, sometimes so slowly that I don't even get a flower out of them. So it'll be interesting to see what the Gardnerianum does down there. I haven't done anything with this area except for weed it. The weeds got this spot was like nothing but vines over here. So I got that cleaned up. I plan on popping in some annuals. Don't know if I'm gonna keep that planter there or not, or pick out like an actual centerpiece plant to put there, or just leave it empty. That might look nice too, it's just like a nice circle of like some clean gravel. Could do that. The Sable Miners did well. You can see which side stays warmer during the winter time. I was waiting to this video so that I could go ahead and prune this up. I like to be able to show the damage from not protecting these in the winter time. And that's, that's the final result there. There shouldn't be any more damage after this point. So there's like one, two, three, four, five. There's probably about six or seven dead fronds on those that need to be cut off. But overall, they did fairly well considering it was their first winter without any protection. I'd say they're looking pretty good. Bamboo here that shouldn't be here. Why, like, why is there a bamboo in the front of the garden? Okay, I'll tell you. This is a black bamboo. It was originally planted back behind me many years ago and I over pruned it. I over pulled on it and almost killed off the entire clump and this runner survived. So I figured I should leave it for a while, probably a few years, let it reestablish itself 
and then I can dig up a large clump of pretty much this entire piece right here and move it to a more desirable area. It's finally making some progress. It's been like a good three or four years and there's just been like one little twig that's popped up every single year. So really, I think next year, probably even this year, but I'd rather do it in the springtime, dig this up and get that moved because it doesn't, that doesn't need to be in the front of the garden bed does it oh the puppy gate's still back here that's embarrassing i need to put that away bananas they're doing good doing what bananas do have the colocasia bikini teenies in front starting to wake up looking good i love how the water collects in the middle of those leaves they're so fun such pretty plants this whole spot's going to be just overflowing with those here in a month or so the eucamus sparkling burgundy here pineapple lily i was going to move this but the middle of this banana clump did some had some dying off over the last year the trunks went into flower late in the season they didn't produce it didn't look cool it was just kind of like they started to and when they do that and that kills off the mother plants there's some separation in here so there might be some more lights so i'm just going to leave it for now because well it's too late i shouldn't dig them up and transplant them right now i don't think it would go well for them on fire peaches not much to say about them they're sitting over here in the driveway getting ready to be planted up Gonna get that done here hopefully in like a week or so. Maybe, maybe two weeks. Uh, they're on drip right now, they're fine. I'm not really in a rush to get them potted up. So back in April, those were down here. I forgot, I need to go over those planters. I'm, I'm gonna circle back that way. And then here are those hydrangea trees that I was looking at from the window in the house. These are strawberry vanilla hydrangea trees. These were originally down here. See those two big, big, <laughs> big those two big blue planters. Those are new. I had smaller square blue planters over there that these hydrangea trees were in. And uh, perennials and pots you usually get a few years out and they need to get into the ground at some point. But maybe you can see what the problem was from right here, other than the fact that they just got way too big for the little pots that they were in. Not a lot of sun right here, right? So things were pretty uneven. There's not a ton more sun over here, but it's more, not a lot, but it's definitely more than when they were down there. Last summer, I had picked up a couple of, I think they were pinky winky hydrangea trees. I'm pretty sure that's what they were for my sister who got a new house. And I had them sitting in these pots for like a week or two before I took them over and planted them up for her. And I just loved, absolutely loved the way that it looked. And that's when I was like, I think that I would like that over here. I know it's a different vibe from the palm trees and like the big bold foliage that we get the tropical plants. There's something nice though about having perennials over here. At least for a few years, I'm not going to have to worry about planting these up. I can just pop some annuals in them and that's it. So I think that these are going to do much better over here with some more light. This, this side of the steps, the sun gets pretty intense though. So even though it's a panicle hydrangea, it doesn't mean it's going to love it. We will see. It all kind of depends on the weather this summer. I don't know, things are weird. It's June and I'm out here wearing a hoodie. This is in the 50s when I came outside this morning, but if we get the typical summer heat where we hit triple digits and it's crazy humid, then I, the, the sun might be too much for that one. We'll just have to wait and see. This one's on, well, it's not on drip right now. I need to redo the drip over here. But when you get on drip, sometimes you can push the plants a little bit further. Now, it's an experiment. There are a lot of things on this end of the patio that are kind of an experiment because of how the lights sort of wonky and confusing. In several weeks, these will have big plumes of beautiful white flowers on them, like 12 to 18 inch giant cones of flowers that drape down and slowly turn into pink as they age. And I think that that's going to be a wonderful thing to be walking around and have dangling above your head or right in your face. I'll probably just smack everybody in the face, but that's okay. Worst things in life than taking a bunch of flowers to the face. The planting, pretty simple, variegated sun and patient, tropical rose. That's the pink one right here and then the vigorous orange variegated sun patient so orange orange pink pink with super tunia vista jazzberry on each side and a cute sweet caroline ipomia sweetheart lime caroline it's a sweet potato vine with heart shaped leaves i really like how the jazzberry goes with that green doesn't that look nice it's a good combo still plenty of filling out to do with each one of these they've only been planted up for like a week so not a lot's happened with them. Okay, here's the first area that I worked on off camera after I cut off from the last video. The Alexander palm was already here in the last video it had fallen over and after a day of pretty hard work, I managed to get standing back up. Then I had to come in with a shovel and regrade this entire area. The soil was mounded up really, really high over here from years ago when one of my old queen palms had to be popped in the ground when it outgrew the greenhouse. 
the big pump, there's a service here in St. Louis that will take your house plants when they get too big and they store them in a warehouse greenhouse. That's how I have these big plants. Just thought I should clarify that. There's usually questions about that. So I had a queen palm that got too big for the greenhouse. It had it for like 13 or 14 years. It was big. And uh, when they said they're not gonna be able to take it because it was hitting the roof, I said, okay, let's plop it in the ground. This is where it went. And all the soil from the hole that they dug for it, they just threw up here. So the grading here has been off for several years and driven me absolutely crazy. So I spent a long time in here just digging and moving the soil back down. It's going to take some more time. Weather's going to do a lot of the sculpting there, but it looks much better. This was up about another foot and a half in the back. It just looked ridiculous. I didn't like it at all. This is much better, much more smooth. And then I also, you can see here, popped in a couple of Ensep Morelli. These are the red obsidian bananas. They have fantastic, beautiful foliage. They're one of my favorites. They don't offshoot. They just get big chunky trunks on them. Chunks? Yeah, big chunky trunks on them and huge leaves, gigantic leaves. And they go well with those banana cannas back there. Those are the banana cannas right here. See the similarity? Kind of similar. Think it'll through the window, go red, red, red. Try to keep things flowing color wise. This one looks like it's leaning. I need to straighten it out. This all just got done here. I filled in the area with variegated sun and patience. These are the salmon. Let me get up close so you can see those salmony flowers that don't. Well, I don't know. The camera doesn't like those flowers. They're a light kind of coral color. Salmon. It's salmon-y colored. Have those planted through here and around so that will fill in nicely. There's some elephant ear bulbs and a canna shoot guard. Variegated canna rhizomes planted in there as well. Ah, oh, turbo. But where'd he go? Where is he? There he is. All right, I can't get mad at him. He spent two weeks without being able to swim because he, he got he got neutered and he's still trying to play catch up with the time he missed in that pool. All right, back on topic. I also put the, if you couldn't see, my large bird of paradise is back there. I need like shade. It's so sunny. We can see it though. Big bird of paradise back there. I'm not crazy about being able to see the pot, but once these impatience grow up and the elephant ears, once those are coming up, that won't even be visible. So it's not a big deal. I don't know what this is. This came up when the crane dropped off the palm tree. I, it's a, an old sprinkler line. It doesn't appear to go to anything. So I just left it. I'm gonna leave it for the irrigation company and let them say what I'm supposed to do. I don't wanna mess with it because I'm afraid I'll just totally mess it up. Also got a whole bunch of impatience planted in here. Not as many as last year because in the fall I put these gingers in. These are Zingiber Myoga dancing crane or white feather. I can't remember which one. And silver arrows that I just alternated them through. I think these are big enough that I can probably take the cage off of them. Those are there to protect the dogs like to run through here. So let's keep the dogs from trampling on them. But the impatience went up further in the past because those weren't there. But I think just having the row of two across is totally fine. Tried to stagger them as much as I could. And then there are caladium bulbs planted in the top row. We'll see what happens with those. There's not a ton of light over here. So the idea here is that these gingers will eventually get about 24, probably 30 to 36 inches high in the back row, and those will grow at somewhat of an angle like this, and then have the colorful impatience in the front. I tossed the caladium bulbs in there just kind of for jits and shigs, see if it works out. Last year they didn't do much, but they were planted further back, more in line where these gingers are here. So hopefully they'll get some more sun, and we'll just, uh, we'll see what happens with them. The hardy begonia that was planted last year, Finally starting to pop up and show some signs of life. That was the last plant I was waiting on over here to start growing. Glad that it finally got some movement to it. This is the Time Traveler Hosta. Got some holes in it. The bugs seem to appreciate this one, so I need to put some of that bug and slug stuff around the base of this one. But it's looking good. It's already way bigger than it was when I planted it last year. But a very nice Hosta. Very pretty, it doesn't get too big, has some damage on it, some bleaching on the leaves, which I assume is from before the leaves flush out on the trees above there. It was getting just a little bit too much sun. I'm loving this hosta. I don't know how it's going to show on camera, but the leaves have kind of an iridescence to them, sort of a shimmer. Are we seeing it? Probably not. Uh, it looks nice, you get the point. Is that this area from here and over? That's all new. Now the berm, look. Look at all the impatience. 
finally did it. Talked about it last year, but didn't do it. And I had been talking about the spring and finally got it done. Why is the sprinkler up? Did the irrigation come when I was gone? I took a little break. Had to drive a family member to the airport and I just got back. They didn't come. I need to talk to them about the thing. They weren't supposed to come today. I don't know what's going on. But that sprinkler head was not up before, so... Don't know what that's about. This area right here was full of all these butterbirds, the pedicets, japonicus that are in here, and it is just too much. I wanted some change, wanted to do something different, so I pulled out all the ones that were in the front and planted these impatiens in here. There's also a row of caladiums in the back with those, so those will come up and over the front. Some of them are already starting to do their thing, but they're just now popping up, so not a lot to them. And I decided to just do this area from right here to right here. I was going to go all the way down, but there's an area that the dogs prefer to run through. They don't like the path, they like to run through the bushes, so I didn't, I didn't think it was worth the time planting them there when I know that the dogs are going to run right through them. Decided how they want to get through here, and I'm gonna let them keep doing that. This one, look at this. Look at the size of this one. I really wanted to pull it up to keep the impatience going all the way down to there's a pathway hidden behind this plant that i need to move but it's just it's too big and glorious I mean, look at the size of this thing this thing's freaking gigantic and the leaves how they have this curl in them i think this one is pedicich japonicus hybridus or curly q and those might be the same thing or they're different i don't remember sorry not much help there but it's one of those two and it's big absolutely massive plant great perennials i do prefer the variegated ones because they stay smaller and they have a reflection at nighttime they bounce the light back from the light up here so it lights things up but i made sure to get some white impatiens in the mix down here so that will still stand out at nighttime all this uh stuff right here is some redoing the drip so the drip's kind of in disarray right now laurel hedge looking nice be an oral hedge. The pedicets should stay put. My experience with them has normally been that they do their spread in the spring and then they tend to fizzle out around July or August when it gets really, really hot. So that's another reason that I'm happy to have these impatience here because those will keep growing. They'll continue to have color when these are starting to wilt down and not look their best. Let me point that out to say I'm not concerned about those coming in and spreading and taking over. You're not supposed to, what are you doing? <laughs> Well, he didn't trample the impatience, so that's good, I suppose. The mimosa tree. This wasn't flushed out in the April Garden Tour. It is looking absolutely glorious and gigantic. It really could use a prune. I'm hesitant to prune it because I don't want to forfeit the flowers this year, but I don't want it growing over the pool. It's a messy tree. It's a beautiful tree, but whoa, this one is very messy. It's dainty and elegant. Those leaves fold up at nighttime and they get those beautiful, like, puffball pink flowers on them but these things around late summer into fall early fall they just start dropping everywhere very very messy and then the little cottony things from the flowers it's just not the best tree to have near a pool if you stay on top of pruning that's not a problem but it's been a couple of years and i kind of let things get away from me it's looking big and glorious so who cares prince of orange philodendron silicon very nice have the monstera back there and just a whole array of houseplants and tropicals over here this philodendron didn't realize that I had forgotten to put a drip in that one, so that's that's what happened with that one. It'll be okay. Tough plant. The Matophyllum bipinatifidum lickety split. It has deeper lobes in the leaves there. It'll be fine. Not concerned. Have a gorgeous bloom over here on the Metanilla and some more buds or a bud popping open. There might be some more hidden back there. I need to take this out and do some moving with it. Foliage pushing out on it, which is nice because it still has some of that crispiness left on it from the dry air during the winter time. And I don't think, oh no, there are other things over here. I was gonna say that's it for the spot. Well, other than the house plants, which you can see here, Dracaena, Shamanthes, Ficus, Parlor Palm, have some pothos down here, Ciba Blue, Epiprenum. Looking nice. Philodendron Giganteum's doing some growing. Looks like the honeysuckle's starting to creep in there, so I need to move that. I need to move that whole plant. I'll get to that later. I also planted a small spot with some impatience up here. Again, with the caladiums, just the same as before with a hardy begonia right behind it. This is an experiment because I'm not certain of what the light's like over here. I've never planted anything in this spot. I had the extras and I thought I'm just going to toss them up here against that wall and see what they do. There's a variety of stuff up there. That helps get me gauged as to what will work perennial-wise for next year. Things that are more expensive. Just start with the cheap stuff, see how they like it, and move from there. This is, well that's not even supposed to be there. Beautiful Dragon's Wing Begonia, Major Wheeler Honeysuckle. Fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? Look, 
probably my favorite perennial I have out here. Well, I can't, I can't say that. I'm not going to pick favorites, but it's fantastic. Pollinators love it. The color on it's vibrant. Doesn't have as much of a smell to it as a lot of other honeysuckles do, but that's all right. And it blooms throughout the summer. Not a lot, but keeps putting out sporadic blooms here and there. These were absolutely covered. I say these, there's another one over here. Absolutely covered in flowers about three weeks ago, and this is the next succession. Not quite as impressive, but still looking pretty nice. And over here, still looking a mess. All this new stuff, all everything with impatience, and it's only been in the ground for like a day or so, so they need time to settle. I did another spot with impatience. I put a super tuny vista bubble gum right here because this side does get a lot more morning sun. I want to see if that will come over and drape over the front. Further back, there's more shade, more caladiums that we can't see yet. A little lime punch panicle hydrangea on each side. I figured since the hydrangea on this side did well, that maybe those will do okay there. Oh, gonna find out. And I popped a Manhattan Euonymus back there just because, you know, I've been talking about wanting some evergreens in this area. More evergreens help shade things or add some privacy. This is the hookera planter. That's just, I mean, that's all there is to it. Just a few hookeras and a hardy begonia that I tossed in a planter. It's a good variety of plants for some dry shade. They've been doing well there. This Lespedeza, this has chlorosis, so I need to come in here with some iron and do something about that. But it's a sturdy plant. It's had chlorosis before and I totally ignored it and it kept growing and was totally fine, but I know I shouldn't do that and I have the iron, so I figure I may as well do something about that. I tossed a little lime punch hydrangea back here. I have one more left to plant, variegated milkweed. Super Tuny Vista Bubblegum to come over the front. I need to get this staked up. This Lespedeza here drapes over everything. When I have it staked up, it opens up a lot more space. Oh no, you see my secret. That's where I hid my fall pumpkin. Don't look at it. It's not that time of year yet. I intend on using this area for just like scatter seeds, zinnias, and cosmos, but those aren't scatter seeds. They need to be down in the soil. They need some darkness, but just cutting flowers because it gets a good amount of sun, but this Thuja up here did a good amount of growing this spring, and I don't think that's going to happen anymore, so I might just continue on down with some super tunias and let that variegated milkweed be there and just, just let it be like that. I don't think I need to go too crazy here. Japanese maple bonsai, looking good, but if I don't get on top of pruning it pretty soon, I don't really know if I can keep calling it a bonsai. I'm supposed to have some cool weather next week. That'd be a good time to give that a prune and some weeding. Look at all those. Look at all the little seedlings coming up in there. That's not right, need to get those out of there. Pool planters, I walked right past these. We didn't even talk about them, did we? You, now you can't see them. These had the bonfire peaches in them back in April, and then I went out and well, I grabbed a few a few new things. Changed it up. Let's see if I can find a spot where we can actually see these. The sun, not working with us today. Similar to the other end, tropical rose, variegated sun impatience with the orange, vigorous orange on each side. Supertunia Vista Jazzberry with some Supertunia Vista, or no, just Supertunia Honey, not Vista. Love the Supertunia Honey, and there are Supertunia Vista bubblegums in here, but I'm gonna pull them out. I don't like them in here. I think they'd be better over there on the hill, and I still need to underplant the Alexander Palm, and I want some bubblegums coming over there so that you can't see the pot anymore. That will help cover it up, and these are still finding their way. It's only been a few weeks. These need some more time to fill out and get their shape, but I think that these are going to look very, very, very nice here in a few weeks. I mean, look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? So much color, but not the Vista bubblegum. So the reason I don't like this in here is because I feel like from far away, it just looks like the Jazzberry has faded flowers on it. And the bubblegum, all the Vistas are pretty strong growers, but the bubblegum, it's going to outcompete those Jazzberries. So I just, I want it out, out of there. It doesn't need to be there. Got enough going on in there. It doesn't need any more. Okay, this area. I had lots of perennials and things lined up over here. I've gotten most of them planted. There's only like three things left. And then I have things ready for repots. And this section is just ready to get done up. Haven't done it yet because the place I store my palm trees forgot one of them. And they'll be here next week. I called them today and they said that they have it and it'll get here. And once that's here, I'm going to focus on getting this area planted up with annuals from like right here and over just to get some color into the area. That mule palm will be moved. It's going to get repotted into this pot right here and I have another one that's going to another pot. It's a whole shuffle thing. So basically from here and over, still need to do some work, but the rest of the yard looking pretty good. Like, fantastic, considering it's May. Well, it's June. Got a lot done last week. Don't typically have this much done this time of year. It helps that in March and in April, I focused very, very, very heavily on cleaning and just wiping the slate clean out here. That made it a lot easier to focus on getting the annuals and perennials and things in the ground and having places to stage things up and get them looking nice. We're getting there. There's always going to be mess. There's always projects going on out here, but things have definitely come 
a long way. I feel like there was something else over here that I was supposed to talk about. What was it? I have no idea. The umbrella planter. There it is. It's looking pretty good. Okay, oh, there go my goggles. That was in a video not too long ago. We already talked about over here. Made tons of progress. And look, there's really, I have like three things of annuals left and a few perennials and that's it. Well, that's not it. I mean, you know there's going to be more. Things are just getting rolling for this time of year. But you want to miss shrubs that got transplanted back in it was either april or march i think it was april late april they're doing well they even have some new growth on them i have some japanese honeysuckle and some other plants that are coming up over there that I need to get out and do something with but otherwise spot's looking pretty good i have some pots that need to be moved around which isn't a big deal they move easily i'm just trying to pick out which ones i want to plant the succulents in so i still have them sitting over there bird's nest fern the variegated one finally found a sweet spot for this one it was giving me trouble Getting this thing hydrated, I ended up pulling out of the pot for a third time and getting some more compost mixed into it. This is all stuff from the birch trees. Oh, those are from the pine trees, actually. That's really neither here nor there. It's sitting on top of the fountain. There isn't any water in contact with the bottom of the pot. But I think just having the constant humidity around it is helping. Growing much more nicely now. Where are you going, Turbo? Got distracted by the dog. Ginger, look at that one. Absolutely beautiful Green Mountain Costas. I think that's everything. Oh, I only have 3% battery left. Uh-oh. Well, good timing to run out of battery. I hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? There's still lots and lots and lots left to do this year. You saw the bare space over in that bed. Plenty of spaces left to fill that need to get handled. As things stand right now, things are looking pretty good. Loving those. Those came out beautifully all right as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing that's the critum forgot to point it out critum lily doing really well look how big it is and the white lava colocasia looking nice too okay now i'm actually done now it's over keep on growing bye bye oh the tie forgot about the tie it's doing very well getting a good amount of morning sun need to restake it that's going to get moved over there maybe that'll happen this week i don't know 